Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today from around the world, and welcome to Microchip Livestream. My name is Mamoun Ahmed, and I have our medical expert and my good friend, Martin Smith, today. Good morning. Good morning, Martin. As always, we're streaming live from our corporate headquarters, Chandler, Arizona, and this is your opportunity to ask us questions or comments on today's topic, designing medical devices. We'll talk about different market segments and what's Microchip's offering on those, and we'll also look at some demos at the end. Yep. Perfect. But before we get started, uh, we are going to go to the booth to Rachel and Wayne so they can give us some of the instructions on how to ask questions and win prizes, right? All right. OK, great. Well, it's great to see everybody already starting to talk in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. Keep that up. Hello, everyone. Yes. <laughs> uh, keep that up because we have some giveaways for you. Uh, if you guys are Curiosity Nano fans, it's our new platform, super easy, super flexible. Um, we just released a bunch more. So we are giving out today the AT Tiny 1607 Curiosity Nano and the uh, PIC, uh, PIC 18F 47Q10 Say Curiosity that twice Nano. Really fast, yeah. yeah, actually, uh, I really like this um, microcontroller. It's really robust and uh, it's been very popular lately. Real good so. real-time control microcontroller. Mm -hmm. Um, and you may find it useful for uh, prototyping some of the things that you uh, that you see at the live stream today. Right. What else we got? Uh, so yeah, so uh, keep commenting in the chat, and we'll choose the winners based on that. And um, just a reminder, I'm filling in for Matt Dickens. So oh if yeah. If you guys miss him, he'll be back next time. And and I don't know, Matt, if you're watching, Matt's on vacation by the way, so he probably shouldn't be watching. But you know, <laughs> he might be bored right now over overseas. Hi, Matt. Um, so he'll be back next time, so don't worry. <laughs> um, and yeah, so just make sure you're 
putting questions and we'll try to get to as many as we can. Um, if we don't get to your question, always you can send an email to livestream at microchip.com. And we'll put that in the lower thirds. Yeah. Cool. Any, anything else? I think we're good. Just uh, wanted to say hello to everybody. It's been a couple of months since we have doing have we've done this live stream. So uh, welcome back, and I think we'll throw it back to uh, Martin and Mamoun. Thank you, Wayne and Rachel. All right. So uh, our first topic. Before we go into any details on our market segments or any demos, I want to ask why medical? Like why why you focus on this segment? I guess. You know, it's really it's an exciting time in medical in the healthcare field right now. So many things are changing. It's, uh -huh. it's being called the digital health revolution really because of all the technology involved. Uh, in fact, Steve Jobs has been attributed to saying that there's been this intersection of biology and technology mm -hmm. in the 21st century, and that would be a really critical piece to the healthcare model. Uh -huh. And uh, so what we're seeing is a lot of companies, Apple obviously has followed that lead. Yeah. You've seen a lot of basically trying to change the healthcare model. Okay. Um, you know, how, how things get delivered. And I think we as patients, consumers of medical, healthcare, whatever, are seeing some of those changes now, but it's just really the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot we're going to see more okay, as far yeah. as telemedicine, uh -huh. uh, being you know, treated in our home or getting uh, examinations in our home, whatever, from doctors and things like that. So a lot of cool things are going on along those that's, lines. That's great, yeah. So you keep talking about this model. Could you, could you kind of oh, elaborate on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it basically, it's, it's like the IoT model that, you know, we see. We've got, you know, certain Internet of Things. The things basically are different medical devices right. that are measuring, uh, whether it be a blood pressure monitor, a pulse oximeter, or even devices that are just sending data out for patient compliance, they call it, mm -hmm. if the patient is using the device properly. Right. So it, 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 that's the one end of it, and then it goes to, um, a, to some kind of hub, whether it be a server or a, even a a mobile phone or a tablet, yeah. where the data will get over Bluetooth, it'll, it'll be transmitted there, and ultimately up to the cloud. And in the cloud, you'll see a lot of people, diff a lot of people using that, basically. Um, they'll be the healthcare providers themselves, there'll be uh, data analytics, a lot of data crunching uh -huh. going on with servers, there'll be uh, the insurance companies, the actual right. payers paying for a lot of the medical uh, costs. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. I remember seeing some, some of pictures like that at some point, I think, uh, or a poster. Uh, do you have anything like that to show us today? Or? Um, yeah, there's a, we've, we've, we've got you know, some slides we can probably put up here, but it shows okay, that yeah. model. It's, it's really kind of interesting. And, and uh, so, you know, again, I just the most before, the, we have all the, the things, the Internet of Things, the medical right. things at the left side of that. And then we've got the center, we've got the hubs, the smartphones, the tablets, the servers, whatever. Right. And then ultimately to the, 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 uh, the, the cloud, which I mentioned before. Okay. You know? and, there's, and besides those people, there's just you and me who wants to see that data sometimes too. That's true. How we're yeah. doing or how our children are doing or a family member, loved one, or whatever. So over time, we're just collecting this data and trying to make sure that our health and everything, our lifestyle gets improved, basically. Right, and data is really key. I mean, mm. everybody wants more data. That's the whole, what they call the big data model yeah. in the IoT world. It's very true in medical. Data is critical. Gotcha. Yeah, perfect. So can you tell me what kind of medical devices you're talking about here, or well, what is it, basically? Yeah, that well, that's always an device? interesting thing. You know, medical devices, um, we can kind of define that. You know, basically, medical devices are any kind of equipment apparatus that either diagnoses or mm. treats or even prevents certain illnesses or whatever. Um, and they come in all forms. They can deliver drugs. Uh, you know, for medication and all that stuff. And then there's a lot more on the market now that's trying to prevent healthcare devices to try and prevent, let's look at our health, let's monitor it, let's see that things are going well or trying to help our lifestyles be better and more healthy. Right, so right. medical devices really cover a wide, wide range of different kinds of equipment, really. Yeah. Can you give, give us some examples, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of things in the area and, and things that are, you know, any kind of device that's uh, uh, portable or wearable, mm -hmm. I mean, or even the stuff in the hospitals. We see different things, you know, ventilators in the hospital for people for breathing. We see portable devices used in ambulances by paramedics. We see wearable devices that people are wearing now. Right, that right. model of just wearing your, you know, whatever your, like your watch is for your steps yeah. and you count yeah. and you're seeing heart rate, that's translating over into medical wearables. And you see some more things that are wearable as far as ways that we get tracked and we get monitored, you know, so our healthcare gets better in that respect. And then ultimately there's also devices or medical devices that go ahead and plant it into our bodies. People are familiar with things like pacemakers. Right. Uh, we've Absolutely. also got things like cardio uh, defibrillators, you know, get the cart started or different different things. And and a lot of that is just happening across. There's an exciting, you know, a lot of different things that Microchip is involved with. Microchip is, wow. Yeah, we've been, in fact, uh, I think, um, there's so many different devices. I, right. think, I think we saw uh, something come up earlier, but 
Um, you know, we're in a lot of those devices. We're in, well, we're in all of these that are listed here. That's only a partial list, really. Right, right. Um, it's, um, uh, these are things that are in design, in production, and we've been doing that, and we basically supplied all types of devices. Uh, FDA has classifications, and other government agencies in other countries mm -hmm. around the world do also. But the FDA classifies things as class one, class two, or class three devices. Right. And the higher you go, the more safety critical they are. Class right. three being life support, life critical. And so we supply devices even in that area of medical, which is something that our our customers really appreciate. That we work so e work so well with them without restrictions, and we we've been doing it for a long time. We've Perfect. had a we've had a focused medical group since 2006 so here at Microchip. That's so awesome. So we're really into this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's glad to hear. There are a lot that I learned today, actually. Good. Uh, looks like we actually have a question from the booth. Yes, we do. Uh, Pankaj asks, what are some of the biosensors that are compatible with our uh, microcontrollers? Or, like, what do you see a lot of um, for sensors that are used with our microcontrollers? Okay, well, there's a couple of questions there. One is, what are you seeing? And then some compatibility issues. Uh, I mean, our, our products are really there to process the data from almost any kind of sensor, whether mm -hmm. it be and basically most sensors are going to put up voltage or current, uh, you know, for the most part. So anything you want to do as far as measuring that, either converting it or measuring it directly or whatever, you know, our products do. We, we have the front end analog, what we call signal processing, when you mm -hmm. get something off a sensor. Uh, you have the microcontroller handling things. You've got wireless, you've got uh, yeah. power management, you know, you get everything in the whole, basically everything you could need to go into almost every kind of medical device you can think of. Almost for the whole system we have. Yeah, the for the whole system, yeah. exactly. Plus, you know, firmware stacks firmware stacks, things like that, for security and con connectivity and things like that, so. That's great. I think there's actually a follow-up. Uh, he, he's uh, asked an additional um, question about wearables. Uh, you know, are, are there any MCUs that are good for wearable applications is the question. And I think you're going to cover that kind of further on, but I just kind of wanted to let you know. Um, yeah, and I'll just give a quick answer then and we'll cover it in more detail, but almost Really, almost all of ours are good for wearables. Yeah. It depends on the application. So we'll we'll talk about some trade-offs a little bit later. But there are right. you know, most of them you know are used. We, we've used we've had wear uh, different uh, different types of our microcontrollers in different types of wearables. So yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Any other questions from the booth? No, I think we're good. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. So uh, back to our discussion. Yeah. Uh, I think we're kind of talking about different types of markets and different types of places, different types of devices that we're servicing and we're Microsoft's involved in a wide variety of devices, it sounds like. Is there any mar market segments what's exciting out there? What's worth mentioning, I guess? Yeah, there's, a, there's several different market segments or sub-segments uh -huh. of the healthcare and medical markets. Some of the most exciting and biggest growth areas are two that we I can that come to mind really are remote health, uh, remote patient monitoring, mm -hmm. and drug delivery or medication delivery. Huh. Uh, remote monitoring is uh, uh, something that is really exciting because it basically it's good for both the patients as well as for the hospitals and the payers, the insurance companies who are making payments. Mm -hmm. uh, many people have probably seen a trend where they're not staying in the hospitals as long. You know, they maybe, maybe mom or dad was in a hospital stay for a week or two. Right. Now, you know, if, if they go to the hospital, you know, they're in a lot less time than their parents were, or definitely than their grandparents were in the hospital. And the idea yeah. there is, one, there's cost issues, obviously. Yeah, of course, yeah. Whoever's <laughs> paying the bill wants to, you know, right. get you out of there soon. But they still want to make sure the quality of health care is good. Right, so right. there's more monitoring going on. So you go home early, you'll be, you might be monitored for a while mm. with certain type of medical devices that are wearable or you know, in some respect, portable or wearable or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. And um, also for people who suffer from chronic diseases, it's no fun for them to keep going back and forth to the hospital, the right. doctor's office, you know, multiple times a week if they're suffering from a chronic disease or even you know, a couple of times a week. And that way they can be monitored at home and if everything's fine, they stay home. Yeah. It's a quality of life issue, right. they this can enjoy that. And then if something comfort, starts right? to look a little off, they'll be contacted by the healthcare mm. provider, you know, the doctor or whoever and say, hey, we do need you to come in or you know we need to talk and see what else is going on right. so there's a great quality of life in that respect and the final area and we'll talk a little bit more about is patient compliance okay. are people using the devices properly you know so they they get the benefit from them and you know we know that it's, it's, everything's working right right so to make sure that everything is online everything is actually working the way it's supposed to be right and they're okay that's that's fantastic and it, it can all happen well you're not in hospital you can actually be at home Yep, and that's that's really the goal. Is you know, yeah, it, it works. Yeah. It works for both you know everybody. Really, it's a good thing. So a lot of home health care. Uh -huh. There's even the telemedicine aspect 
kind of similar where you can see a doctor on your, on your laptop uh -huh. and you have a device that takes all your vital signs and it gets transmitted back to him. He can analyze them and then you can talk through what's going on, analyze your symptoms, and maybe you just you do it all over the phone without having to even go into the doctor's office. Wow, that, that is very exciting. It is. Great, yeah. So remote patient monitoring and uh, some other, uh, you said also direct delivery as well. Yeah. Yeah, so those, could you kind of elaborate and maybe can, sh can show us yeah. any what we, we have available okay. from it too? Yeah. Yeah, um, we have um, different ways to do that. Again, drug delivery means can I can I do it more simply, more cost effectively as a as a manufacturer mm -hmm. or as a healthcare provider, and how easy it is for the patient. Again, can I do something in my home right. that typically I had to do in a hospital or a doctor's office? Mm -hmm. You know, great examples are things like auto injectors. Typically, when you need some kind of shot, you had to at least have some kind of healthcare professional give it to you, right. either at a doctor's office, a clinic, a hospital, or maybe even um, you know at a local drugstore or whatever they give out right. you know, flu shots or whatever you know. Right, right. <laughs> so things like that. So the idea being moving that towards something called an auto injector, where a patient can give themselves the injection at home, you know, and done properly, and if it's being monitored, again, patient compliance monitoring, right. then you know the healthcare professionals know. It's being done at the right time, the right dosage, right. it's being used properly. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of an exciting area too. It's a, it's a big deal because you more and more this, you know, making sure the medication is done correctly and the correct dosages and, and times and things is, a, is an important thing, you know, as far as the quality of healthcare. Right. And so we want to make sure people aren't confused, they know how they're supposed to use it, and they're getting help along with it to make sure they're using it in the way that's most beneficial to them. Yeah. So do you have any demo that you can show us on that maybe today? I do, actually. Okay, um, great. We've got a few we can show up overall. Uh, we have um, a, a couple of different, well, three different variations on demos. Uh, one is our, what we call our, our mesh nebulizer, and another one is our secure version of it for authentication purposes. And then there's the micro pump, which we'll, we're going to show all these here in a little bit. And finally, there's a something we call the connected wearable medical activity tracker, which should be used in a design to add patient monitoring mm -hmm. or patient compliance right. into the design. So the first one I can show. Um, is this um, this nebulizer, and uh, actually what we what we're replacing is there's a there's something if you want to maybe pick that big one up first and oh, then we can get this a one right shot here on that one yeah. yeah this is the typical nebulizer breathing machine you know it's kind of it, I mean it does its <laughs> job really big. well uh -huh. but it's big it's bulky it's um, you know uh, and then to design it is very expensive design process it's. It's got, uh, you know, just plug in the wall, it draws a lot of power, it's got a motor, it's got a pump, it's got electrical circuits in it. Right, and, uh, no, it is definitely. You know, so yeah. it's, it does its job, but it's not like you want to take that on vacation or take it to school, <laughs> you can use your breathing to. treatment. Yeah. So what we replace that by is we've got a, we call our single chip nebulizer, and I can start, there we go, for breathing treatments for those people who suffer from asthma or COPD or something like that. And that's really nice because it, um, Again, it's so portable. You know, you can throw it in your purse, your right. backpack, your pocket. Very small. And, uh, yeah. and as far as manufacturing and designing it, it's a single chip solution. There's only one 8-bit MCU in here versus all the other chips. And we see even some of the devices that are trying to get smaller like this uh -huh. are still using FPGAs, piezoelectric driver circuits, and all kinds of other electronics. And this is basically one 8-bit MCU with some discrete components. And so wow. both for those who design and manufacture nebulizers as well as for those who use them, mm. it's a win-win, really. It's a great, great solution. Oh, yeah, but just by looking at the sheer size up between these two, yeah. I mean, that's there's a real difference there. You big know? difference. And you said all is done by 8-bit MCU. In the right, back. yeah. That and is so, phenomenal. Yeah. So, so how, how is the 8-bit handling all of it, or how is it done, I guess? That's yeah, the nice thing about it is that the, you know, Many of our bit microcontrollers have core independent peripherals, and some people aren't familiar with that. Core independent peripherals, yeah. Maybe you can kind of elaborate on what core independent peripherals yeah. are for a lot of our viewers. Yeah, the, okay. the core of a microcontroller is kind of the brain inside the silicon, but there's lots of peripherals that the I.O. and the analog and other things that are peripherals. And the idea behind core independent peripherals basically is to offload that core. Mm. And that's a good win-win for a lot of reasons. But the peripherals themselves are smart enough that they can be, once they're set up, they can go off and do whatever oh, they need wow. to do. In this case, you know, once the, the nebulizer gets set up, then um, the core can either go off and do something different, or in this, or in the case, this case, one of the best things to do, you can go to sleep, which is another, one of many ways we can do power management. All right, so that. we'll come back to this design, but before we do, we looks like have a question from the booth. Yes, we do actually. 
Um, so it's you know, I just wanted to interrupt you really quickly. There's a question about that nebulizer, mm -hmm. um, in particular, just kind of uh, specs, specs and ratings and whatnot. And I think uh, I figured I'd pose it to you guys. Uh, where can they find more information about this? And you know, perhaps if they want to dig into the details. Good on question. It. Uh, this demo and all of our demos mm. are, are located on our webpage, microchip.com slash medical. Right. And there's a list of uh, lots of different medical devices. There's links, and you go down into the links, and you can find the design files. And so we offer the, 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 uh, the C source code, the schematic, right. and application Same note thing. or user guide. So basically, it gets you started on how to get started and design that. So anyone can come in and get those drivers and get those design files, download, and start on their own? Yeah, and then you start off, you know, and build, build your own prototype and play Perfect. around with it. You've got all the information you need to get going on that. Fantastic. Wow, that's great. Uh, so let's back to, back to the design on the nebulizer. Okay. Um, Wayne, did you have any other questions before we move forward? No, I think that's it. All right, perfect. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, yeah, so if you could maybe kind of elaborate or kind of show okay. us uh, any of the designs on uh, how, how those are done, and you said CIPs, mm -hmm. core independent peripherals, how all those are putting together. And yeah, let's, uh, if we can throw some up, I'm sorry, go ahead and throw that back up if you would. Um, you can see again, the green box is, is mm -hmm. the microcontroller. And everything is really integrated into that. The gray boxes have a few, have a, each have a FET and some discrete components. Mm -hmm. And they're driving a piezoelectric element, a little uh, round mesh, di mesh disc, it's hard uh -huh. to say fast. <laughs> and uh, it's got, it's machined with multiple holes, laser machined. Uh -huh. And basically what we, we do is we're driving those stages um, to drive the piezo element, just kind of like a vibration, and it vibrates. It's okay. like finding a resonant frequency for a mechanical mm. this mechanical disc, basically. And so it will vibrate and nebulize, atomize, whatever you want to call right. it, and nebulize yeah. the the medication in the in that. And so it's a it's a great concept. It's fantastic. And like I said, it's great uh, all across the board for everybody concerned as far as getting size, power consumption, uh, firmware overhead as your developer. Mm. You know, get just, it's a win win throughout. That's great. So inside of this blue uh, green box, I saw mm -hmm. there, there are many, many different types of components. See, mm -hmm. I see some uh, CLCs, comparator, DAC. I mean, there are a lot of other uh, other options and some analog as well. Mm -hmm. um, all of those, how wh wh where people can actually find those? Is it uh, all the information? I think they're all on the on the website. But is can they get it from medical website or is it all in Microsoft Eight Bit website? Yeah, the uh, I mean, all the, you know, I'm sure that the, I know the data sheets and all the information mm -hmm. is on the eight bit website. Uh, but again, on the medical site, you you have there's uh, there's information about the demo itself on the web page right. as well as all the, all the files you can download, as I mentioned. So that's a good place to get started and digging deeper about core independent peripherals. You know, your, your, all the eight bit say, that's, sites. That's, that makes devices. absolute sense. I mean, I can see why that design came from this big to that small because you're putting everything on a single chip. Yeah, and we're trying to do a lot of that. We've done other mm -hmm. medical designs using core independent peripherals, and it's been a real boon to basically get it either down to a single chip right. solution or a smaller making number of smaller, chips, yeah. making it again, you know, a lot more cost effective, less power consumption, mm -hmm. and a lot of just overall, you know, an easier and quicker design. People yeah. can get get to market faster, get to their time yeah. and money, what we call it, faster. That, that you know, they start sense, making yeah. money on their products. So. And also, these uh, these are all on chips, so probably reliability is very high based on the reliability of the micro. So uh, absolutely, you don't have to rely on other vendors, or other lo lots of components, not larger board sizes, I guess. So those are the benefits you're getting. Yep. Yeah, you, you eliminate a lot of the risk in uh, your design. That's, that's fantastic. Good. All right, fantastic. So let's move on. Uh, OK. Um, using this same one, mm -hmm. there's a breakdown on this particular nebulizer demo. But you can see what we've done with this one is we can break it down. The, the top part where the medication resides, we call the medicine cup. And you can see the liquid in there. Yeah. And, uh, then the next section is the, you've got it broken down, mm -hmm. if you take it off. And you've got it broken down with the medicine cup, you've got the head unit, and inside, as you can see, probably either, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but on the diagram, there's a little uh, crypto authentication chip we embedded into the medicine crypto cup. Crypto authentication, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, and this is being used, yeah, this is being used basically to authenticate because there's probably two different areas of security. We have, we have security like encryption, and then we have authentication. And mm -hmm. sometimes you authenticate a device to a web, like Google, uh, the Google web or, or AWS or whatever. Or you also want to authenticate because you want to protect a peripheral, something that's disposable. You want to protect that so it doesn't get counterfeited and people don't end up buying a counterfeit version of right. your medicine cup in this case that or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, probes, sensors, you know, that are disposable, or you don't want people buying something that's you know detachable from your medical device. Mm -hmm. And so the nice thing about that is that it protects a lot of things. It protects 
your brand name, it protects your revenue, it protects your from liability. Right. Um, you know, somebody could come up with something that doesn't work properly or has uh, a tainted medication, you know, hopefully that would never happen, but you want to be able to guard against that kind right. of stuff. Absolutely. And so it's important to say a lot of things you want to protect and you do that with crypto authentication. So all you do is just plug it in and it authenticates? Yeah, so if you put in a medicine cup that doesn't have the crypto chip uh -huh. and you know, the, the proper, you know, firmware in here, uh, it won't work. But once you plug it in, right. then you plug it in and you get, in this case, you get obviously the stream. Stress. And you can yeah. also see, we get a little green light. Green light. Mm. That's hard to see there, but you can see it. But basically, it won't work without that. Right. And so, so if you had a cup that does not actually have the crypto authentication or is not at the right, right crypto authentication, that means it will not talk to it. Yep, it won't talk to it. It'll, it will it'll say that you don't authenticate it. So it'll protect, you know, it'll protect you from, so and, but you, they have to use the manufacturers. Plus the crypto authentication chip will also, has a monotonic counter, so you can find out if you think, if, if the ma manufacturer's specification on it is you only use this so many times, mm. the whole unit, then it will just stop working and say, you need uh -huh. to get another one, we can't, you know, we, it's, it's time to get a new one, this was wearing so out. So all pre-programmed yeah. in there. Yeah. That is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Great, great. All right, so uh, without this, other than the nebulizer, is there any other demos that, I mean, I saw some other demos you brought in, maybe mm -hmm. you can move on to another one? Yeah. Um, we've got one, uh, our, call our MEMS micro pump demo. And mm. This is over here on the pole, but you see, as you're seeing the diagram, again, we're using core dependent peripherals. The box is a uh, is the MCU itself, the microcontroller, mm -hmm. a bit microcontroller. And again, we've taken from you know these big, huge pumps you see um, in hospitals, and we're breaking it down. This is a way you can see on, on the camera there, you can see we're doing a drip system like an infusion pump I would see. do in a hospital. Right. But basically, again, we've reduced the chip count. Great, mm -hmm. that, that's also good. Uh, before we move forward with the detailed design uh, and talk about it, uh, it looks like we have another question. Oh, okay. Bit, so if you could go. Hello, yes, um, Cheetan, I think that's how you say it, I'm not sure. Uh, he asked if, uh, if the nebulizer demo was a closed loop control design, um, and also maybe if you could talk a little bit about if this demo that you're about to show is a closed loop control design. Okay, again, I think well, it depends on how you want to look at that. I'm not sure exactly, you know, maybe it's a question we need to answer offline as far as closed loop. Uh -huh. As far as, you know, again, it's a, it's a single chip. We're driving a piezo element out. So I'm not exactly sure what that would mean in this case. So maybe it'd be better to, to submit that question and we can kind of get a more in detail to answer okay. that one as far so as. So you send that question to livestream at microchip.com. Um, there's also a follow-up uh, about uh, finding the resonant frequency. Uh, he asked if that is done uh, in the microcontroller, or by the microcontroller. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, basically, it, it's found in it's. Uh, uh, basically, I mean, once set, I mean, you can set it. The variations are such for manufacturing. You have tolerances. You'd be able to find it. We set for optimal, but it is done by the microcontroller. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Great. Any other questions? None so far. All right. Perfect. All right. Let's uh, go back to the micro pump demo, okay. please. Okay. So for the micro pump, um, again, as I was mentioning, you know, we're doing a lot more functions within the microcontroller, so we've mm. reduced the chip count drastically in this design. Uh, for this particular one, we also added some power management for a rechargeable battery, some other things. But the basic, you know, if I only really want to pump, you know, basically it's the microcontroller. Mm -hmm. And in this design, we have two high voltage uh, chips that are driving a MEMS micro pump. And the two high voltage chips also are made by microchip. In fact, since we did this design, microchip has uh, come up with a new chip that actually puts up both these functions into one chip. So basically, for using the pump functions, you have a microcontroller, a bit microcontroller. Mm -hmm. So very cost effective, low power, and, right. you, and then you're driving, you know, one a driver chip for the pump. So again, a much more elegant solution, smaller, more portable, and you're and you're doing a nice job as far as moving liquids or gases. Right. Uh, you know, low volume, meter, more accurate, and uh, moving in either the liquids or gases, medications or other things. Right. So I see you're using a lot of this 8-bit microcontroller. And I, with myself, I have also worked with a lot of 8-bit microcontrollers. And uh, could you kind of, kind of let us, our users, know that how hard or how easy it is to use? Because I personally find it extremely easy. And uh, I have seen many different tools available. So maybe could you share what's your experience or how you use it to do your design? Yeah, um, you know, our, our team really likes using the, the microcontrollers because the, it, part of it, the simplicity of it. Mm. But again, you know, we really love it because it's really part of what really is wanted out there. When you talk about, well, basically what's happening so much is that everything is shrinking. You know, for medical devices, especially if it's going to be wearable or ultimately implantable in the body, it's got to get smaller. 
it's got to draw less power. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, your board size needs to be smaller, the battery needs to be smaller, right. but so you can't be drawing power. So lower power consumption, smaller footprint for the package itself, smaller overall PC board, right. uh, you know. And, and you have to do, it's imperative. you have to be able to do all of them very easily as well. So yes. you can get to market soon, right? Yeah, and <laughs> even, you know, the firmware overhead, you reduce a lot of the firmware yeah. development because of the core independent peripherals, for example. Because you're just really programming like. hardware. Just exactly, our so more reliable yeah. and, and uh, you get it's a lot faster too. Yeah. Oh, great, yeah. So do you, you said you do you use MCC, like Maple Leaf Code Country? We do, right? yeah. Okay. In fact, the uh, I believe, I believe either both or yeah, I think both of the app notes for this one do mm. show some MCC examples. Perfect. And it's so it's you can you can kind of walk through all the development and setting up setting it up. Oh yeah, there, MCC so. is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then you can just set it up, ready to go in minutes, literally, yeah. right? Yeah. Perfect. All right, let's uh, move on to the demo. Sorry. Okay. I interrupted on those uh, some other things, but if you guys have any more questions or uh, comments or anything that you want to check out, how MCC works, definitely visit microchip.com slash uh, uh, MCC, actually. Uh, you can download MCC, you can read about it, or if you have questions on it, you can also send those questions at livestream.microchip.com as well. Uh, but let's talk about microphones now again. <laughs> okay. Um, and as I was mentioning before, you know, we've, we've reduced the chip count down, and it, again, for all those reasons, those benefits that we were talking about earlier, uh, using the core independent peripherals and, and you know, we've got the, the analog and uh -huh. all of that available for microchips. So we're able to get a, a much cleaner design. So it's, again, there's been a lot of interest both the nebulizer as well as the, um, the micropump mm -hmm. driver designs uh, because of those issues. And, and, and we like it because we know the solutions mean a lot, um, you know, both in patient compliance as well, I mean, for patients to use in there, how they're using it as well as for the, the designers and manufacturers of these medical devices. Okay. So I really like that. I've, I've, one of the things I do get to do sometimes is hear back once in a while from, from some of the patients who are using some of these devices, and it's kind of it's kind of fun to hear. It's rather gratifying to hear that we love it, works great, kind of that Perfect. kind of thing. So it's kind of a nice thing. So all of these demos, I mean, they all can be connected to the internet at some point if the designer wants to. Definitely, and that's okay. one of the thing we, we you know we'd like to show. I'll, I'll try and. It's so small, but that's what we got. But yeah, you can see the <laughs> diagram on there. This is what we call our, our wearable connected medical activity tracker demo. There it is. And uh, actually, this is bigger than it really needs to be. All of our boards we lay out on a much larger scale. Uh -huh. So you can have you know, connectors for your development tools. You're going to have test points. But basically what this is, it is a, it is a, um, it's used as a baseline design where if you want to start tracking what a patient's doing, whether they're, whatever way they're moving, movement, environment, um, things like, you know, ambient temperature, the altitude, they're going up and down, you know, in the elevator, pressure, you know, up and down a hill, um, um, uh, light and uh, movement, all kinds of movement, gyro movement, you know, you can do sleep, sleep analysis if mm -hmm. they're rolling around in bed and you look at the light, you know, and get all those kinds of things. So, and this event is connected over Bluetooth, one of our Bluetooth That's LE right. parts. Uh, one of our modules, in fact, uh -huh. and also has a crypto authentication ship, oh. so it can be authenticated. So your your web server, whether it be Google or Amazon or Microsoft Azure or whoever, can the web server can authenticate and say, yeah, this is a um, this is a proper device. I can talk to it, or, or if it's not authenticated, it knows not to talk to it. So in this case, you authenticate it. You, when you're connected, you authenticate to the to web, and then you can send the data, all this patient data. Right. And so how this matters with patient compliance is. A similar design using a lot of the same ideas, the same, you know, you can start with this baseline and start looking at things like, well, when is the patient doing? Are they taking, you know, the right dosage? Are they taking it at the right time? Are they moving it? Uh, say, mm. say they decide, uh, you know, a doctor would worry that if someone was like on a nebulizer that he would, he may take it and push the button but spray the medication out into the, um, into the air right. and then come back and claim, well, I'm still sick. Uh, this medication isn't working. Well, the doctor can look and say, well, we noticed you moved it out of position, which showed us right. you weren't actually moving it, using it properly. Using it properly, huh? Yeah, and so, that is you know. very interesting, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> it's important not only to get the data, but for protection, obviously, right. in that respect. But it's but mostly it's important to get all the data. Are they using it properly, you know, overall, right. as the case. And there's a lot of things you can look at using some or all of this kind of technology. And it really, again, it, it goes back into all those areas for patient compliance, for drug delivery, it gets back to remote patient monitoring mm. issues. So there's a lot of that. In fact, I think we'll be talking about remote monitoring in another live stream sometime. Oh, so we'll, we'll good. go more involved yeah. with that. But this is kind of the, the baseline start that says, right. if I want something wearable and trackable, we'll do that. So we'll go back to uh, Booth for a question. But before we do, I just wanted to clarify one thing. Uh, some of you are, if you don't know that uh, it, it, this board actually still says Atmel, but if for someone out there who 
if you don't know that Microsoft acquired Atmel several years ago at this point, mm -hmm. I think that's an older silkscreen probably. Yeah, that's an older silkscreen. We're, yeah. using, we're using uh, the uh, SAML 21 32-bit MCU, gotcha. BTLE module, mm. the uh, crypto authentication chip. So it's, uh, it's how we've been utilizing gotcha. you know, the ARM-based uh, no. you know, that we now have. It Makes sense. Yeah. All right, just a clarification for someone out there. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go back to the booth for questions. So, Mamoon, funny you should mention that. Uh -huh. um, we actually do have a question um, kind of specifically regarding the crypto authentication devices. Um, and and it's, it was actually a fairly general question, but I, I'd like to, uh, you know, give Martin a, a, a kind of a nudge or an opportunity to kind of talk a little bit about uh, the, the specific ones that are used on the demos, if, uh, if, you, if you do get a chance to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe. We're utilizing uh, different ones. We have the SHA-204 device, SHA-204, which is the mm -hmm. device we used on the secure nebulizer okay. you saw. We're using on the, um, on the uh, medical activity tracker, we're using the ECC-508A, mm. using that one. And then we've been combining devices utilizing the, uh, the AVR-IoT board that the 8-bit group came out with as an ECC-608A, ECC which we're using, one. we connect it to our pulse oximeter and so you're getting heart rate and blood oxygen up on the Google Cloud, and it's authenticated on the cloud. So we're using, again, SHA-204, ECC-508A, ECC-608A uh, now also. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. ECC-608 is the latest chip, I believe. Uh, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great demo. And those of you who actually has not seen the, seen the, the, the AVR IoT demo board. Yeah, IoT. Yeah. You can definitely check that out. Uh, it's microchip.com. I don't know if it goes to AVR IoT, but you can literally Google it. You'll find that link. Great board. Uh, actually, for someone who is actually trying to do IoT design, fantastic board to start with. I personally have used it, had a chance to get a little bit play with it. Very good board. Yeah, and uh, like I said, we were, it, was a, it was a fairly straightforward uh -huh. uh, thing to, I mean, we married the two boards together. We had about four wires, I believe, right. on, on the design, and some firmware, obviously, but it was pretty simple, basically. It says, okay, I'm going to send this data out and get it you know, authenticated and on the Google Cloud. So, I mean, you know, it was really a nice thing to not have to spend right. weeks and weeks and weeks on trying to get on the cloud. Right, it's right. A, it's much, much quicker, you know. Much quicker to get it yeah. started with, yeah. And you can, so it's, it's very good. Definitely check that out, guys. Uh, any other questions from the booth? Uh, sure, um, not necessarily a question, mm -hmm. a, a programming note uh, fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, since we're, uh, we are getting questions about the crypto authentication chips, um, Two things. Um, we're actually going to do a future live stream with our security products uh, group team. Uh, so, you know, if you have specific questions about those devices, um, we'll put it on the schedule and let you guys know. Uh, you know, just go to the live stream uh, page. It's microchip.com slash live stream and uh, sign up to get notified of the next set of live streams that we have coming up. The other thing is we have had them on to discuss the, the crypto chip and the AVR IoT board. So if you, um, I think you'll go back to, Rachel, is it March of this year? Uh, yeah, I think so. During I think we answer that. And yeah, the AVR IoT, you can use um, Studio 7 to program that, so. Cool. Great. Back to you guys. Thank you, guys. All right. Yeah. So let's, let's finish up the activity tracker demo, I guess. Maybe you can uh, give us a little more rundown on okay. how things are all working together. Yeah, and so it's, it's this overall concept really, you know, we take the activity tracker, do patient monitoring, remote patient monitoring, or for drug compliance, medication compliance issues, and it's this whole overall package. You know, we, we have a lot of different medical demos at Microchip that, you know, whether it be um, uh, e portable ECG, uh, you know, from like remote monitoring, portable ECG, we've got the medical activity tracker, we've got a pulse oximeter, we've got um, blood pressure monitor, and then the drug delivery devices you saw, and a host mm -hmm. of others. And we utilize, you may have seen on the desk earlier, we've got a, we took four of our, you know, separate medical demos and put them together into a patient monitor demo, basically. So you have, you're measuring, again, body temperature, you're right. measuring uh, heart rate and blood oxygen, you're measuring the ECG cardiac waveform and, uh, and blood pressure. And we've got it running on a, on a, uh, a Linux development board. Is uh, it a that uh, demo right there? Yeah, 32-bit 30, MPU, a 32-bit MP, uh, MPU mm -hmm. development board running on Linux with third-party graphics software and taking all that data there and right here in front of us there. And you can see right there, that demo. Monitoring. Yeah. So that was something that says, you know, we can, how we mix and match, you can do simple medical functions, mm. you can put them together in complex ways. 
we've got the expertise since we've been doing this for a long time mm -hmm. to you know to work with and, and, and send out all this information you can download and work you know work out and build up the customers and all the customers we work with. Perfect, fantastic. All right. So it sounds like the compliance, patient compliance, is a big deal, right? It's yeah, as I mentioned, yeah, it, it really is. As far as and again, it gets back into that whole remote monitoring thing, but the. Um, Again, for I mean, obviously for liability's sake, for the doctors and, mm -hmm. and the manufacturers, but also I guess it's just really a quality of life issue. Is it am I using it correctly? Because sometimes you know they're, they're trying to make this this uh, the, the devices more easier to use, and I think many of them are. When I ones I've actually seen go into the home for patients, you know, easier to use because we're not medical professionals. You know, a lot of people aren't medical professionals, mm. not engineers, <laughs> and so you want to have something that's easy, has instructions. Right. You know, the touch. Maybe like like a microchips touch is a good example. We we um, we found that it tends to simplify the design for the user, so we don't have problems. And what medical device manufacturers and designers don't want is problems coming back from a patient, mm. uh, and it gets back to the FDA, and right. it's Especially not a fun to get thing. Through a lot of certifications. And sometimes and it's just yeah, well, it's just a it's just a matter really of um, you know it it's just education. The device mm. works properly, and so is it, is you know the touch control is good. Are you getting good feedback? Is is it you know in this appliance data being sent? So you get that data sent back again. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to monitor it, whether it's the manufacturer of the device, see this working properly, and patients are using it, the doctors, hospitals. Right. So everything has to work properly all together, and yeah. everything has to be easy. That's yeah. the goal, and that's the that, it. You really is because like. yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's got to be easy in the home. It's got to be intuitive, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's really the goal. And the fact that it's small and we're running a battery for a long time is really important too. Oh yeah, that's for, another for the big patients, thing. Yeah. yeah. So those demos, you saw, as uh, one of you were showing us earlier, I think <laughs> it looks like they're battery operated. How, how is the low power options on these micros or on these designs? How, how well do they hold up? I guess. Oh, they hold up very well. Like mm. I said, because of the, you know, the flexible power management you can do as far as what peripherals you put to sleep and how they get woken up, and uh, even the processes a microchip uses for the in manufacturing our microcontrollers are very, very low current processes. So between the processes we use the power management schemes for the microcontrollers, and then you add in core independent peripherals mm. as an additional thing, as I mentioned before, right. as a power management part, because you can put the core to sleep, and you get some pretty you know, power efficient designs, so okay. your batteries last a lot longer. Right. And the battery can be smaller, like I said before. <laughs> yeah. like That's that. what you want, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everything is smaller. Everything's smaller, smaller, smaller. smaller. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the core is completely can be on sleep, and microcontroller can still, start, still do its own thing, mm -hmm. right? So and that's yeah. how you say power. That, so that for more processing intensive applications, the core can go off and do something mm -hmm. else while the peripherals are handling the, the common function. And uh, we find that's important too. Uh, the core independent peripherals have helped a lot of designers who thought, well, you know, I've got to go to a 32-bit for this generation of the design. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they will somewhere down the line, mm -hmm. depending on that. But, you know, we can save them a generation or two as far as cost and power consumption, you know, overall board cost. Uh, by using an 8-bit microcontroller with core independent peripherals. And that's been a real boom, again, to help them say, hey, we keep it small, we keep it secure, we keep it safe, we keep it everything we need right. uh, before they have to. So we can, some, if we can get in on the architectural phase of a design and help out or give them the, the down, they can download the files and evaluate it. Mm. And then they can say, you know, I don't necessarily need to go yet to uh, a bigger microcontroller, or, you know, more power hungry, whatever. And so that's a, that's a good trade-off. Right. So let's say if there is somebody brand new came to microchip and they want to start designing medical devices mm -hmm. or they have something in their head. Uh, initial to begin with, I can kind of maybe clarify that they can go in MPLabX, MPLab Express, download those. We have tons of examples to get started with, get familiar with the tool chain. But after that, what do they, where do they go to? Do you have enough demos or any guidelines or application notes or are those all in the link that you mentioned yep. before? Those are all in those links. We tried to give them everything that they would need to design their own. Mm -hmm. um, like I said before, we. You know, you, you basically can lay out your own PC board much smaller, but you've got the schematics, you've got the source code. You can, you know, step, uh, evaluate step through. You've got applications notes or user guide, which are great as far as going into detail mm -hmm. on what the board does, what all the technology is, sections of the schematic, what each section of the device is doing. And they can uh, all so get started from your Microsoft Yeah, so basically medical. from all of that, you can get, get a good, really good start on that. Perfect, that's fantastic. Yeah, anything else you wanted to add? No, I think you know we we've talked about a lot of good stuff here. I think we talked about you know why medical is so important. Mm. It's changing radically. Right. The face of it, a lot of radical change. We talked about some areas like remote healthcare, uh -huh. remote monitoring. We talked about drug delivery. And those are all areas that are happening. It's just really, it's an exciting time. It's very, it's growing a lot. The face is changing. We'll see 
it, it'll probably not in a few more years before we really see a big difference is when we go to the hospital or go to a doctor's office right. or we'll see more that we'll have available in our homes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see that fairly soon. We're already seeing already what seen our customers it, are working right? on exactly. and that'll start getting pushed out to their customers, the hospitals, doctors, and eventually we'll see it in, in our homes as patients. Yeah, looking forward to see those. It looks exciting stuff, yeah. Great. Well, I'm glad that you guys are all putting all your effort and time into this and investing, you know? Good, so, yeah. Perfect, fantastic. Well, if you don't have anything else, I guess we can go back to the booth to see some uh, final question and answers and maybe the prize winners. Sure. Um, you know, so I will say this. Uh, we've gotten a, first of all, great live stream, guys. Thank you. Thank doing, you. Doing wonderful. Um, second of all, uh, we've gotten a few questions regarding uh, future products and plans and things like that. And unfortunately, we're not in a position to be able to uh, to communicate anything about future or unreleased products. So just as a programming note, um, so, we're, you know, I, we aren't ignoring your questions, but we kind of can't answer them. But if we did miss your question, um, send us an email at livestream at microchip.com yep. and we can pass it on to the right people, try to answer it, um, see what we can do. So. Sure. I think we have some winners. Uh, so Hi. we will send the following people both the AT Tiny 1607. Two for one. Two for one, yeah. And the Pig 18F 47Q10 uh, Curiosity <coughs> Nanos. So you'll get two of them. And I might not pronounce your name correctly, um, but if you. You'll hear be your better name than Matt and, and you th <laughs> Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, I will try to Hi, live Matt. up to Matt's level. <laughs> uh, if you hear your name, or you think you hear your name, uh, send us an email at livestreammicrotube.com and we will process the giveaway for you and send it to you. Yeah, make sure you add your at your mailing address and a uh, telephone number we can reach you at. Yeah. And uh, one other thing, if you are for some reason in a country where we're restricted from shipping to you, we're, we apologize in advance. We don't know right now, so we'll let you know when we uh, when you get in contact with us. Okay, so the winners are Emilio Colon, Pankaj Yadev, uh, Chitan Sangavi, Jim Alberton, and <laughs> Vincenzo Dello. All right, so I will. I'm sorry, Jim. I can't let you win <laughs> because you work here. Uh, <laughs> but sorry, Jim. You have access. What's the next one? <laughs> um. The next one would be Humberto Acosta. All right, that's better. <laughs> so, uh, Emilio, Pankaj, Chetan, Vincenzo. And Humberto. And Humberto. Send us an email. Platform for evaluating different microcontrollers, so it'll be good to have two. Absolutely. All right. All right. Anything well, else? I don't think so. Uh, it's are you great. enjoying your time here? Yes, it's been warming lovely. Warming the seat for Matt, or...? Yeah. We may kick him off. <laughs> no, no, Matt will be back. So, um. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll let uh, the gents close it out then. Sounds great. Thank you, guys, and congratulations, winners. Uh, if you don't have anything else, uh, thank you, Martin, again. That's a great, yeah. great demo for everything. I learned a lot today as well. well thanks for having me here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, hopefully, we'll see another live stream sometimes. I'd love to, yeah. We will figure that out and see how that goes. Um, but thank you guys, thank you guys behind the scene, everybody who worked here uh, tremendously, worked, pulled this all together. We couldn't have done this without you guys. And thanks all the viewers. Make sure to follow us and subscribe on our YouTube channel and our social media platform. And until then, next time, see you.